Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video with myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. We've got quite an AMD focus video for you today my friends and we're going to start off today's proceedings with a little something regarding the Ryzen 9 3950X. So what do we actually have on this particular processor? Well, it is a potential reveal slash leak of the release date because a Swiss retailer, words are harder apparently, has listed the processor on their website. And what that tells us is apparently we can expect to see this processor come out quite soon, in two and a half weeks to be exact, on September the 30th, 2019. And according to the text, this is based on quote unquote official info from AMD. Obviously that is Google translated, so do take that with a pinch of salt. So, you might wonder about the price that you can see here. Now, obviously, prices vary by region, etc., 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 but I expect this price might not be accurate, or it might just be what this particular retailer is charging. It might be a regional thing that I'm not aware of, because AMD has already confirmed that it will launch for $749 MSRP in the US, and the 999 Swiss francs that it's listed for on this particular uh, image here is about $1,000 in US currency, so take it for what you will, but this would make sense, to be honest, but we'll have to wait and see how true this ends up being. But speaking of Ryzen 3000, we have a very interesting update regarding those boost clock issues that we've been discussing. So, of course, we have discussed this a lot the last few weeks. There have been several reports of a lot of people struggling to get their Ryzen 3000 processors hitting the boost clocks that were actually advertised. Uh, the well-known overclocker De Bauer basically asked his viewers to fill out a survey to basically get a good read on how many average users were actually able to hit the boost clocks that they were expecting, and the results were quite concerning. And I discussed myself comments from an ASUS employee on a forum where they claimed that this was due to concerns about temperature and damage to the processor itself that were made by AMD themselves. Long story short, let's jump cut to now as we have a new update as AMD have released a new Agisa microcode that fixes the issue of the boost behavior in Ryzen 3000 processors. Now we do have a bit of a statement from AMD about this. It is rather lengthy. I'm not going to read out the entire thing because, well, I'd be here until next Christmas, but I will read out some of what they had to say. Quote, Hello everyone, we're delighted by your support on the strong momentum of 3rd gen AMD Ryzen processors in the marketplace and we continue to watch your feedback closely. Today we have some important updates for you concerning processor boost behaviour, desktop idle behaviour and any monitoring SDK. The first two changes, changes will be arriving in BIOSes based on a GISA 103A BBA and we are planning to make the SDK public on developer.amd.com with a target release of September 30th. Starting with our commitment to provide you with an update on processor boost. Our analysis indicates that the processor boost algorithm was affected by an issue that could cause target frequencies to be lower than expected. This has been resolved. We've also been exploring other opportunities to optimize performance which can further enhance frequency. These changes have been implemented in flashable BIOSes from our motherboard partners. Across the stack of third gen Ryzen processors, our internal testing shows these changes can add approximately 25 to 50 megahertz to the current boost frequencies under various workloads. These improvements will be made available in final BIOSes starting in about three weeks time, depending on the testing and implementation schedule of your motherboard manufacturer. Additional information on boost frequency in the third gen AMD Ryzen processors can also be obtained from this separate blog update. However, while AMD did say there that the boost update is not available to you or I, it has actually leaked at least an earlier version of it, and Tom's Hardware managed to get their hands on this beta version of the Agisa update. And this was luckily compatible with the motherboard that they have, a Meg X570. So you can find their article linked in the description below this video where they have provided numerous tests and graphs and all their testing and everything that they've done. Very worth your read for sure. Go check it out. But again, while the version of this they have is obviously not the final version we're going to get as the public so we can kind of expect some improvements by the time it actually gets to us but we can still see from Tom's uh, findings here 
that it seems to have resolved the issue in a majority of cases. For example, the 3700X was correctly hitting 4.4 across the board at clock settings. Apologies for punching my mic there. And apologies to my mic as well, a bit rude of me. But seriously, what we can see is a definite improvement versus what we were seeing previously. Now, this isn't consistent across all tests, of course. We do see some shakiness still present in Cinebench, for example, but that may be to do with the fact that this is not the final update. That might be fixed by the time it gets to us, or it might just be something with the setup that they have, you know, as with anything, it all depends on setup, airflow, blah de blah de blah Not saying that is the case, I'm just saying it is potentially a factor that you need to consider. But still, regardless of that, the results here are encouraging, which is nice to see because Ryzen 3000 has been doing so, so well, and this was just like a dark cloud hanging over it, so pleased to see it's been resolved. A bit annoying that it took this long, but you know what they say? Better late than never. So we are done with our AMD news. We're going to move over to something from Xbox Scarlet. So we know a fair bit about the PS5 um, when it comes to specifications. The Xbox Scarlet is a little more mysterious, but obviously we know a few features have been confirmed, like ray tracing, for instance, which is the subject of this very topic. As the Coalition Technical Art Director Colin P Penty, and they are, of course, the guys behind Gears 5, talked about a few things with GameSpot, and you can find a link to their article in the description below this video. And during that very same interview, he mentioned that dedicated ray tracing calls is going to be a big thing. So he pretty much confirms that dedicated ray tracing calls are a thing on the Xbox Scarlet, and the direct quote is as such. Quote, we don't have anything to announce right now in terms of gears with the new hardware, but I'm definitely super excited about what the new hardware could do. Having dedicated ray tracing calls is huge. So, what can we take away from this? Well, the main thing that it raises is a giant question mark over the head of the PlayStation 5. Now, obviously, we know we're going to see ray tracing in some form on the PlayStation 5, but are we going to see dedicated ray tracing calls there as well? And also, is this potentially going to employ the hybrid ray tracing solution that AMD filed a patent for back in June of this year? So essentially what the patent was, in case you missed it, was something that enables real-time ray tracing using a combination of software and hardware methods rather than just relying on one solution. So, of course, again with patents, just because it exists does not mean it's ever going to be a final thing that is in a product that you can hold in your hand. It might just be a pattern that's just there in case they decide to do something with it in the future, but it would make sense to do hybrid ray tracing for a console solution. And this also pretty much confirms that it's the Scarlet, at least, is going to use some version of the second generation of Navi because we know that Navi is going to have ray tracing capabilities for the second generation. So while his comment is initially quite brief, it actually confirms quite a few interesting things and raises several interesting questions that unfortunately we don't have answers for at the moment. Again, what is the PlayStation 5 going to do? Are we going to see hybrid ray tracing? This is most likely going to be second generation Navi or something based upon it. Obviously it's going to be a custom SoC most likely. So, a lot of interesting questions raised by that comment, but still nice to see that we are going to be seeing dedicated ray tracing calls on the console. So, we're going to finish things up now with a little something cool from G-Skill. So, what do we actually have for this one? Well, we actually have G-Skill's memory being used to break the DDR4 6GHz world record speed. So this was thanks to the Taiwanese overclocker Top PC, and they were using G-Skill DDR4 Trident Z Royal Memory. And what they have managed to do is, again, break that world record and go to 6016.8 MHz. So again, breaking through that DDR4 6000 barrier. And unsurprisingly, G-Skill are very, very happy that their memory has been proven to be capable of this when put in the hands of a very skilled professional overclocker. And I have a bit of a statement here from the Corporate Vice President at G-Skill, Tequila Huang. Quote, Achieving DDR4 6000 MHz has been our goal for quite some time, and we are extremely excited to be able to achieve this major milestone together with MSI. 
In cooperating with MSI, we see the tremendous effort put forth by both parties in order to push memory speed to new frontiers and make this world record a reality. We hope to continue working with strong teams like MSI to push DDR4 memory even further into new heights and achieve more milestones together. And because I forgot to mention it, this was because Top PC was using the MSI MPG Z390i Gaming Edge AC motherboard, and for those of you wondering, it was a 9900K processor. So, very nicely done indeed. Just shows how far memory can be pushed when it's in skilled hands, and well, when you have some good memory to work with, it always helps. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.